right, good morning. Welcome to a guy and his projects video feed. Today we are working on my big brother's Ford F-150 2002, correct? Yep. Yeah, 2002 XLT. We are replacing the entire AC system practically. Uh, as you can see, this does not fit in my garage whatsoever, uh, partially due to his mega tires. Uh, Anyway, we are replacing the AC system. His compressor has burned out, so we are replacing the compressor, the condenser, the orifice tube, and the other thing, accumulator. Um, in order to do that, it's going to be fairly interesting. We're gonna to have to take this off, possibly the radiator. I'll know when we get in there. Because uh, uh, your condenser is gonna be up here under this cover somewhere. If you can see, I can't reach any step stool. Uh, the, the accumulator's down here and the orifice tube should be as well somewhere. We're gonna have to find that when we get there. Your compressor is gonna be essentially, your battery's right here. Your compressor's gonna be straight down there with the clutch. Uh, we're also gonna be replacing the serpentine belt while we're in here because why not? going to take this cover off from over the radiator that's going to disappear put it somewhere we're not going to step on it not totally zoomed in because you want people to actually see what's going on but all right so next we got to take these ac lines apart right here this is going to your uh, condenser so we're going to bust those apart in order to do that you can if you want if you got a compact wrench and whatnot and you can work around everything i'm lazy i'm going to take this upper radiator hose off and fold it up out of the way so it's not in my way all right so now we're just going to break your ac lines free we already took the radiator hose off to get out of our way just a couple crescent wrenches pop it loose Both those are disconnected. Your radiator should now be free to pull out. Should be the keyword. So now your little orifice tube has to come out. That's in your line right here where it was connected to the radiator. Now you're just going to reach in with needle nose very carefully. You're going to pull it out. You're going to try not to break it. You might have to do a little twisty action. So I don't know if you can see all those metal flakes on there. That's from when the compressor burnt up. All that's floating through your system. Now, it's very important. When all those metal flakes are going through the system, it's going, they're gonna lodge themselves into various places. Your condenser, this is your orifice tube, they're gonna lodge in there. All that's going to affect performance. All that's going to destroy your new compressor. This is why we replace all those pieces, all those parts, and then we flush the system or and we're replacing all these components. But all that crap right there is going through your system. Uh, we found out when we just pulled this compressor apart, uh, this is my brother's truck. He hasn't had AC since he bought it really. Uh, he says it worked when he first got it and then it died. So my guess is they replaced the compressor to sell it. They did not put oil in it because there's no oil in the system anywhere. And that's exactly what happened right there. All right, moving on. Now we're going to take off this big old jumbled mess. Go for it. Just got two little bolts holding it in. Eight millimeter. And this is also going to get the accumulator. The other one you'll probably find it easier to use a wrench. If you got a ratcheting wrench, that's even better. If not, it might take half a beer before you get this one out. You got bolt number three right there. My recommendation to you would be keep these bolts, put them back in the hole after you remove the assembly. Now you're just going to do whatever you got to do to get that crap out of the way. Now way, way back here you have your accumulator. We just took this 
bracket off so we can get to it. Uh, right here, you're going to have your little switch. I don't know how easy that is to see. Uh, that's going to come out just a typical push pin plastic. Okay, once you get your harness off, uh, sometimes that can be a pain in the butt, especially if it's all dry rotted in. Tuck that out of the way. You're going to get your fitting off. I know you can't see that, but you'll see in a second. Okay, now with our new accumulator, which is right here, we're going to put this back on to this one, reinstall it. So you're going to want to save that. Okay, so now you're going to zoom in here on the accumulator. Now I can't see nothing. This one. Yep, that bolt right there. That's going to come out. That's going to disconnect your line. That's this line right here. We're going to get that out of the way. That's 13. 13 millimeter. A little pain in the butt to get to, but that's the hazard of working on your vehicle is everything's a pain in the butt to get to. <laughs> Got it. Jeez, that sounded bad when it's in my ear. <laughs> I thought something was blowing up. Should get a little pop for that, huh? There you go. Okay, so next, I'm gonna reach down here. You have a bracket holding the accumulator on together. I'm gonna flip you upside down right now, and it's right there. That's another eight millimeter bolt. It's gonna come out. So next is disconnecting the AC line away from the firewall, which I want to turn you upside down again and hopefully my auto rotate works. It's going to be way back there against the firewall. You will trace it out if you can't see. I have no idea what you can see right now. But essentially you're just going to put your clip on there, slide the line off, and it's going to be exactly as easy as what I just made it sound like. Not. Okay, in about five hours, when you finally get that line disconnected, you can go ahead and take the accumulator out. Let's twist it a little bit. Beautiful. So once you get it up, compare it to your old part or your new part, make sure it's uh, you didn't buy an accident. Because that would suck. Woo. Looks pretty similar. Looks like this is going to bend a little bit, but that's fine. Same size, same hookups almost. Looks like we're going to have to reuse this little bolt right here. We're going to have to take it out and we're going to have to put it in here. Should not be an issue. All right, so to get the compressor out, you're going to have to get the belt off. The belt is going to come off. It's just a half inch drive. Okay, so you're going to have to get your tensioner. And then you're just going to Twist it clockwise to release the tension on the belt. You can grab the belt off a couple of the pulleys. Okay, and once you get it off a couple of pulleys, you can release tension again. Then you can get your tool out of there and just take the belt off. Okay, so for reference, don't know if you can see, that's your passenger front tire. You're gonna come in right behind this frame right here is your compressor. Let me get you situated. Ugh. So, right here is your compressor. In order to take that off, you have to have the belt off first, which we just did. So now, as soon as you take these bolts off, you're going to have a wire attached as well as your AC lines. All right, on this compressor, you're going to have three bolts holding it down. You're going to have one in the bottom left corner, which is right there. You're going to have one right here at the bottom right corner. And you're going to have one up in the top, top right corner. And then over here on the left, that's going to be holding your AC lines in. Uh, that's going to come off. Your AC is going to, lines are going to come off. Uh, you're also going to have a little wire up there somewhere. You can't see it from down here. Uh, that's going to come off as well, just a little plastic harness. So I just got to pull this out. Just pull this right out, just like that. So right where you see that bouncing finger, that bolt's got to come off. That's holding your lines in, uh, AC lines. 10 millimeter. Once you get that bolt out, you're going to pull it straight up. Not much room to move in there. Just like so. 
So now your compressor is essentially disconnected. We still have the bolts in, just a couple threads holding it to the in place. We are going to take those out and we're gonna figure out how the heck this is gonna fiddle out. I think we're going to pull the fan off and go out that way. Okay, here comes the compressor. It takes a little wiggling and a little uh, effort and definitely two people is more help. We uh, took the fan out completely to get to the uh, compressor from up above. We went this way, it wasn't that hard. The only thing I'll say is it'll be way easier to get that fan clutch off if you do it before you take the belt off to get to the compressor. We had to go redneck style. Unfortunately, we didn't film it because I thought it was gonna be dumb, but that was probably the best part of the video and we didn't video it. Oh well, either way, compressor's out. Now uh, you can take a break or just go right into putting it all back together. We are going to flush the lines <laughs> Alright, so this is your new compressor. We're going with the Vallejo. Whether it's good or not, I don't know. But that's what we're putting in. There's a bunch of aftermarket ones that all fit, supposedly. Uh, very, very important. As you saw from that orifice tube, we need to have oil and they have to have oil. If there's no oil, there's it's not going to work for more than a few minutes. Uh, it's just like the engine in your car or your truck. You have to have oil for it to work. Uh, otherwise, you're going to destroy it. Uh, this compressor comes, note please add pack oil, uh, and then it says on the back side 6.75 ounces. Your compressor may be different, different manufacturers send them differently. Some of them do not need any oil, they come pre-filled. I believe Dorman does that a lot. Uh, it has all the necessary oil in there from the factory. This one has no oil in there, uh, as stated, so we're going to have to fill it up. Others come with some oil, and you have to top it off. So read the instructions. I know a lot of people don't like to, but this is one case where you have to read the instructions. That being said, this is going in. Okay. It's going to be hard to stay out of the way of the camera. Uh, yeah, that's the pain in the butt part of having a camera, trust me. I'm always trying to get out of the way. Where are my glasses go? Safety glasses. Because those were catching a lot of dirt. Where'd I put them? Spent a lot of time doing this too. That's what I do all day. <laughs> I walk all the way to the, my van that's on the street to get something. Get in there and realize it was in my pocket the whole time. Okay, before you put the new compressor in, you're going to have to take these little sleeves out. Uh, I don't know that they're 100% necessary on the new one. These are just to help guide everything into place. But it's easy enough to do. And we're going to do it just like that. Take the other one, put it in. Because we had a hard time getting uh, it was the top bolt out while it was down there, in fact we couldn't, we are also going to put that bolt back in before we send this compressor down because if we couldn't get it out, then we're definitely not going to get it back in down there. So just stuff to keep in mind. Pull it. Oh shoot, where'd my glasses go? Oh man. <laughs> Second time. I just had some All right, so you gotta add that 6.75 ounces into the compressor. We have put the compressor in, uh, so it's mounted. We just have to put the oil in and replace the O-rings and put in the oil. So we're gonna put in the oil first. Uh, get your little measuring cup with ounces, or however you wanna do this. We are doing 6.75 ounces. This is Pag 46 oil, uh, it's specified for 134A. Uh, do what your compressor wants and calls for, not for what I'm using in this video. This, if you drink it, will probably make you look like the Hulk. I'm not guaranteeing that though, and you may end up in the hospital, so don't drink it. But it does look super awesome. I kind of do want to drink it just because it looks awesome. I would not recommend it though. We are going to do 6.75. The invisible lines on that measuring cup tell me that that is 0.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75. 6.75.
And then we are going to dump that in very carefully. Okay, so because we chose to fill this with oil after, now we suffer the consequences of trying to fit. It's not that bad though. Just get it one of these flexible funnels. Just pour it in. Look at that green fluid, it looks really cool. Okay, while you have the condenser and everything out, you might as well do some maintenance on your radiator and clean it all up nice and pretty. Uh, you have a lot of good access to it right here right now, so might as well just clean her up. Comparison, that's the old one, that's the new one. They look very different. This one's still clean. Okay, you're gonna grab your orifice tool, oil it up a little bit. All right, so for whatever reason, our condenser lines seem to be a little bit short. We took the stupid bracket off of the condenser, and now I think we're gonna make it. the needles drop pulling it into a vacuum now you're just gonna let it sit and do its job okay. all right we got the refrigerant filled up uh, we put the system on a vacuum for a while it looked good we filled it up got the radiator everything put back together and we are blowing cold uh, about 45 degrees blowing which is nice here in Arizona the cab feels great and uh, yeah give me a thumbs up if you're a happy customer oh, I'll give you a thumbs up <laughs> all right like I said this is a Ford F-150 2002 XLT uh, it's got the 5.4 uh, V8 Triton in it it's a nice nice fun truck uh, so if anyway, if you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button down here somewhere. Sorry, we're bouncing uh, somewhere down there. Give it a thumbs up. Thumbs ups are great, fantastic. We do projects around the house on the vehicles, my vehicles, other people's houses, other people's vehicles, bikes, uh, whatever I happen to be doing. I'm trying to film for you guys. Uh, I hope you can hear me over that cold air blowing. I hope it's not making a too bad distraction. But anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.